Today, I want to tell you three things about me. The first is a confession, and that is that I am a dreamer and a little bit of a naive one. I'll go to bed at night after watching the 10 o'clock news and I will lie awake dreaming of being the person who will bring nations out of poverty, who will end slavery and stop global warming all in one stroke. I'm currently training to be a doctor and I'll drive home from the hospital some evenings dreaming of being the person who will find that big breakthrough or the next cure. I look around our city and I dream of bringing about social change and ending inequalities. And as I scan around the room today, I suspect that I am not the only one with dreams. We all have them. And do you know what the most amazing thing about a dream is? It's that occasionally, just occasionally, a dream will turn itself into an idea. And this is where I need to tell you the second thing about me. This is also a bit of a confession. It's a confession that I don't really know anything about anything. A few years ago, I was sat having a conversation um, over a cup of tea about a book my friend Rachel had read. And this book was about maternal health. And somewhere from this conversation came the idea for a charity scheme where we would support women in developing countries by twinning them with women here in the UK who would cover their healthcare costs. Now, I hope you agree, this seemed like a great idea, but there was one problem. I knew absolutely nothing about charities. I knew even less about developing countries, and I had only just started medical school, so I didn't really know anything about maternal health either. Despite that, the next day we thought it was a good idea to send off some emails and nine months later, and I do appreciate the irony, nine months later, <laughs> Pregnancy Twinning was born. We work with local partner organisations in Malawi, Uganda and Sierra Leone and together with our partners, we have changed the lives for over one and a half thousand women. Around a similar time to this, I'd become very aware that lots of young people with cancer are diagnosed quite late. There is lots of reasons for this, but in part it is because at that age, cancer just isn't on people's radars. It certainly wasn't on mine. And so I gathered together a few friends in a pub to see what we could do about it. And despite my aversion to felines, we decided to call it CATS. Um, and that was simply because it made a nice acronym. CATS stands for the Cancer Awareness in Teenagers and Young People Society. Two years on from that meeting in a pub, we have a national charity based in Manchester, Cambridge, London, Liverpool, with more cities on the way. We're making sure that every young person knows the common signs and symptoms of cancer and when to go and get checked out by their GP. When I started those two projects, I was a young, naive, 20-year-old kid who didn't really know anything about anything. But do you know what? I'm now a 23-year-old kid and I still don't really know anything about anything. You see, what they and a few other different startup projects taught me was that you don't always need to be an expert. I wonder if you are familiar with something called the game show host problem. You are on a game show and you are faced with three doors. Behind one of the doors, there is a car. Behind the other two lies a goat. Now, it goes without saying you want to win the car and you've got a one in three chance of doing so. Let's say you select door one. Now the game show host who knows what is behind each of the doors then opens for you door three and shows you a goat. He then asks if you'd like to stick with your original choice or whether you would like to switch to door two. And now you've got a problem. You've got a decision to make. To maximize your chance of winning this car, do you stick or do you switch? Usually this problem is used to illustrate a concept in mathematics called variable change, but what I ask is that you consider it as a metaphor. Let's say that it is a project your organization is working on. The door represents an opportunity that you could take, a conversation you could seek out, a meeting you could arrange, something that you could ask for. The car is your prize, so that represents a breakthrough on your project. Maybe that's a new customer or a contact that is key to getting you off the ground. 
fan of the goat, that's just a dead end. That is you going nowhere. Now the world tells us we need expertise that we should hire consultants and write reports on the different options and then use expertise to select a door. In this problem, a statistician would say it is best to switch and go for door two to account for variable change, these changing circumstances. And for reasons I don't quite understand, mathematically, door two is your best chance. But it still comes down to chance. And personally, I have never been a fan of leaving things to chance. Now this is where we need to leave the game show host analogy behind because it gives us the flexibility to cheat just a little bit. You see, the only way you can guarantee winning the car, getting your prize, getting that key contact or a platform to promote your startup, the only way you can guarantee it is if you open every single door. When I'm recruiting people to work with, I always value attitude over experience every single time. You might ask why. Knowledge and expertise, they can be taught. You can learn them, you can pick them up over time. Passion and drive and dedication and persistence, they can't as easily be taught, if they can be taught at all. Expertise will only take you so far. Passion, dedication and persistence, they have no limits. The only way you can guarantee winning your car, getting your prize, is if you and your team rip open every single door. And that means you're going to need to talk. You're going to need to talk to anyone and everyone that you meet about your idea. You're going to need to send as many emails as you can think to send, as many Facebook posts as you can post. Take as many opportunities to ask for something if they are there. Take every opportunity because every conversation that you have, every email that you send is opening for you a new door. And you know, you will go out and you'll do it and you'll push as hard as you can into every conversation that you have. And most of the time, people will smile and they'll nod and nothing more will come of it. But every now and then, you will have a conversation that goes that little bit further. When I first started CATS, I would subconsciously bring it into every conversation that I had. And my friends and those around me got very bored of this very quickly. They were quite sick of me mentioning it. And I would notice when I'd talk to new people and I'd meet new people, the second I would bring the word CATS into the conversation, I would hear the groans of my friends around me because they'd heard the same thing a thousand times before. But the longer that I just went along with this, the more I started to have conversations which would go that bit further. Sure, most of the time people would smile and they'd nod, but then they'd kind of politely change the conversation. But every now and then, I would have a conversation where someone would offer us a service, offer us some free advertising, maybe even offer us some money. And if any of you have been involved in the charity startup world, you will know until you are established, money is very hard to come by. As a young, naive, 20-year-old kid who didn't really know anything about anything, I quickly learned that the more things I asked for, the more conversations I had, the more that I got. Whether it was someone offering to do us some free design work, someone offering promotion on their radio show, or someone who knew someone who would donate money, the more conversations I had, the more that we got. If you look at some of the biggest NGOs or businesses that are around today, they've not been started by experts. They've been started by dreamers. And the two are very different. And this is where my golden rule came from. Through working on a few different projects, through getting them off the ground, reading stories of others who'd done the same, and looking at the greatest social entrepreneurs, I discovered this one very simple rule. You don't need to be an expert. Just be a door knocker. That means take every opportunity, speak and share and write and blog and meet with and discuss and advertise and promote every opportunity, no matter how big or small. 
The figure that I work on is 99 to 1. For every 100 conversations you have about your idea, every 100 emails you send looking for that break, 99 of them will come up as goats and dead ends. But as Churchill once said, success is going from one failure to another with no loss of enthusiasm. You see, you may knock on 100 doors. And you may get 99 goats and 99 dead ends, and that will be frustrating. Trust me, I have been there. It is very hard. But you will also get that one conversation, that one meeting that leads to where you need to be. And trust me, you will never know. You will never know whether the one in a hundred will be your brother's wife's cousin that you meet by chance at a wedding or the CEO who you've already sent four emails to with no response. You will never know the ones that hold cars behind their conversations as opposed to goats. And your only option is to speak to every single one. Passion, dedication and persistence, they have no limits. I said that I would tell you three things about me, but I only actually told you two. I told you that I was a dreamer. I dream of being able to make a difference. And I also told you I'm not an expert. I have made more than my fair share of mistakes. But the third thing that I didn't tell you was that I get scared. Scared of falling flat on my face. Scared of telling people about my ideas and then being humiliated as they go nowhere. Scared of running an event that no one will come to. Scared that my ideas, or maybe even I, won't make a difference. And again, as I scan the room, I suspect I am not alone. Not alone in having dreams, not alone in wanting to see them happen, but also not alone of being scared of falling flat on my face. I think what we need to decide today is whether our dreams are more important than our fears. Entrepreneur Sharad Sagar once said, some people believe in telling stories. Some people believe in doing the things about which stories will be told in times to come. Some people believe in telling stories. Some people believe in doing the things about which stories will be told in times to come. Which are you? And if you are the latter, let me assure you, you do not need to be an expert. If you want to kickstart your dreams, the single most important thing is to share your idea. Speak to anyone and everyone that you can. Send as many emails as you can. If an opportunity is there to ask for something, ask for it. You may get two goats before you get your car, or you may get 99 goats before you get your car. But it does not matter if you fall flat on your face 99 times knocking on 99 doors, because you will just need one. Passion, dedication, and persistence. They have no limits. Thank you.